The largest Dobsonian telescope from Explorer Scientific has been significantly redesigned. The high mass, primary mirror and extraordinary speed requires much more precise mechanical solutions compared to the smaller types. As a designer, an active and experienced amateur astronomer with a mechanical degree is well aware of the constructional accomplishments that are needed to fulfil these challenges. During the construction of the telescope, hollow sections are made of extremely light aluminium alloys have been used. At the same time, the lattice girders holding the optical elements has to be very rigid as well. We should collimate the telescope with the greatest precisity, for nothing if it becomes standstill due to the smallest elasticity or clunk upon use. Because of this, only welded bindings are used with transversal hardenings, which ensures matchless rigidity for the optical element at any position of the telescope. It should be mounted on an equatorial mount or overturned. For the equal support of the primary mirror, we use a rocker mechanism with an automatic load balancer feature. The diameter of the bended arcs are held within a precisity of 0.5 mm, using the precise tuning of the high-performance bender machine. The prepared parts are checked one by one before assembly. Hollow sections are being prepared by hand, one by one, with the greatest possible care. The chipped elements of the telescope are produced at high precision and high performance CNC milling and drilling work centres. The assembly of the elements are achieved using Argonite Protective Gas handheld welding. The work centres are equipped by master welders with great expertise in aluminium welding, ensuring all bindings are produced in impeccable quality. Precision already pays itself out on production as a prerequisite of easily assembly. The greatest challenge at telescopes with this size is keeping the mirror in a stable position. However, the rock of load balancer mechanism with its circular side support is able to fulfil these expectations masterfully. In order to protect the mechanical elements of the telescope in an aesthetic and time-proof manner, powder coating is applied. Before the coating process, the surfaces and threads to be protected from the powder are covered, which is followed by the anti-grease process of all elements in order to ensure the best grip of the powder. After this, the electrostatically charged surfaces, which are difficult to access using the coating machine, are covered by the powder using manual coating. Then all remaining elements receive their coatings in the painting chamber, ensuring maximum protection. As the final step of the painting process, the elements, with their surface covered in loose structure dust, are transferred into a controlled high temperature kiln where the loose dust melts on their surface equally, where after a certain time a homogeneous surface is formed ensuring an aesthetic dull black finish. The plate accessories, from the finished 1mm wide side plates to the thickest support plates for the mirror with the diameter of 6mm, 
are cut by computer-controlled high-performance laser cutter equipment. This technology, on one hand, makes it possible to cut formations with a very high, even 100 mm precisity. On the other hand, it replaces the need of use of elements used in the past. For example, there is no need for the externally applied grating protecting the ventilators. The main goal upon construction of the telescope's main element was the telescope's easy assembly before the night's observations. The rocker box holds the whole mass of the telescope, therefore it must be adequately rigid. At the same time, it must ensure the smooth, easy and barrier-free mobility of the telescope in both vertical and horizontal directions. This is achieved using a special Teflon GRP material paired with an exceptionally low adhesion and frictional coefficients. Thus the telescope can be moved very smoothly and precisely even at high magnifications. Finally, the six angled support leg ensures a more stable support should we point our telescope to any area of the sky. A primary mirror with this size loses its temperature very slowly prior to the night's observations. Thus five ventilators have been installed. Four of these, mounted on the sides, are generating a circular airflow which flows the warmed boundary layer from the surface of the mirror, while the fifth is ventilating the whole mirror box out entirely from below. The structure, which is responsible for equally and undistortedly supporting the main mirror, has an advantage in importance when we are talking about a parabolic mirror with a mass of more than 20 kilograms and an aperture ratio of 3.6. To serve this purpose, self-calibrating rocker mechanisms are used, which have been optimised using restricted element simulation softwares to ensure the minimum distortion of the mirror. The designer of the telescope constantly assists and controls the production. The new secondary mirror mounting frame, referred to as spider legs, can be adjusted in a much wider range and directions compared to earlier versions. This results in completely stable collimation, which is very important due to the large aperture. At the same time, this adequately rigid mount does not negatively affect the precise and very smooth tuning of the two wide, therefore completely clearly seen even in the dark, tuning screws manually by hand, which is unprecedented compared to any other earlier versions. The full rehearsal of the complete instrument is the assembly of the main elements and thus, the main telescope is the premier before turning the telescope towards the night sky. This is when the fastening tubes and counterweights conquer their positions and the grated tube shows the impressive real size of the telescope. The primary mirror, to serve its protective needs, is not installed yet at this point, however the accessories are being mounted at this time. For example, the shading sponge plane responsible for disclosing the randomly occurring disturbing backlights behind the eyepiece 
which, in case of this instrument, is mounted precisely on its place using plastic screws. In order to fully utilise the performance of our telescope, the optical elements must be aligned properly. This is called collimation. To achieve this, at first the position of the secondary mirror is to be set by moving the supporting legs, so called spider legs. Thus, the reflecting surface of the secondary mirror is aligned right behind the focuser. Then, the position of the secondary mirror must be set using the white coloured screws of the secondary mirror's socket so that the edge of the primary mirror is concentric to the edge of the secondary mirror and the small white coloured marking circle is exactly centred. The black shadow casting cover plate is now removed so the process is easier to follow. Finally, the position of the primary mirror is to be set using the long collimation tool so that its reflected light is concentric to the other elements in the field of view. The more precise this process is done, the better image our telescope will produce. It is not a problem if the first try does not bring the perfect result, just repeat the settings process again. Do not forget, this is very important to power ratio of 3.6.